Hello, in this video we are going to look at a type of configuration that has been very popular in the EVTOL design community. It is called the Lift Plus Cruise. Unlike the multi-copter configuration, Lift Plus Cruise can be used for extra urban to longer range missions. And unlike the thrust vectoring EVTOL, they are much simpler to produce and maintain. But are we missing a trick or two with these designs to make them more energy efficient? We will cover this and much more during the course of this video. The Lift Plus Cruise is fairly popular because of its simplicity. As the name suggests, there are separate propulsion systems for lift and cruise. In other words, there are both lift rotors present and cruise propellers. The simplicity and versatility are reasons why more than 80 registered electric drones and manned EVTOLs are based on this configuration. The Kitty Hawk Cora, which is now Wisc Cora, is one of the most prominent aircraft in this category. While it can be argued that compound aircraft like the Jaunt Aviation's Rosa can be broadly categorized as Lift Plus Cruise, but the aircraft that are the subject of this video involve multiple smaller lift rotors. The use of multiple lift rotors provide redundancy and eliminates the single point failure modes. Half of the rotors can rotate in one direction and the other half rotates in the opposite direction to balance the reaction torque on the aircraft. Since the rotor and propellers are completely separate, they're able to have different characteristics such as tip speed, RPM and diameter so that they are optimal at their specific operating conditions. Furthermore, because the takeoff and landing is taken care of by lifting rotors, the wing area can be reduced and high aspect ratio wings can be used which also lowers the weight. An example of this is the Alaya by Beta Technologies that utilizes high aspect ratio wings to its advantage. From disc loading calculations, it is apparent that fewer, larger rotors would be more energy efficient for hovering. But there are advantages of using multiple smaller rotors too. When there are at least two rotors per side, the ability to produce vertical force with equilibrium about the center of gravity is retained even when one rotor fails. This is achieved by decreasing the thrust on the opposite quadrant to the failed rotor. When three rotors per side are present, the control about all three axes or directions of flight is available. As the number of rotors per side increases, the loss of any one rotor results in a decreasing overall loss of vertical thrust. However, with each extra pair of rotors, there is increasing complexity and probability that a failure would result, as well as increased cost and weight. And therefore, a balance has to be struck and this is true for multi-copters too. But many multi-copter designers are now looking at Lift Plus Cruise to get a higher range. The most prominent example of this is Ehang, which is the maker of EH216, their flagship multi-copter. They are in the process of developing the VT-30, a Lift Plus Cruise aircraft. This seems like a natural transition for so many EVTOL developers that have started with multi-copter. Another example is the Volocopter which is now looking to develop the Voloconnect after delving into VC2X multi-copter. In a detailed study by Baccini and Sestino that looked at the advantages of different EVTOL configurations which were multi-rotor, lift plus cruise and thrust vectoring the energy consumption for three different missions with ranges of 7 km, 30 and 100 km was evaluated. It was found that for short missions, the Lift Plus Cruise did not perform better than the multi-rotors, while for a longer mission, it was outperformed by thrust vectored aircraft. Note that thrust vectored aircraft are the ones in which Thrust producing elements can be tilted to generate lift, such as the Joby S4 or the Lilium jet. If we have a spectrum of mission range and the type of aircraft, then the Lift Plus Cruise would sit between the multi-rotor and the thrust vectored aircraft. There's another hybrid variant though, which utilizes both thrust vectoring and lifting rotors. These include Maker by Archer, Vertical Aerospaces VAX4, and the Hyundai SA-1. 
So we can see that while Lyft Plus Cruise has its benefits, it has quite a few compromises too. First and foremost is the extra weight of the lifting rotors that it has to carry during cruise when they are non-operational. Although it can be argued that just like some aircraft carry ballistic parachutes for safety, in Lift Plus Cruise that safety is provided by the lifting rotors. But even if the extra weight is discounted, there remains the issue of the extra drag that is not only due to the exposed surface of the boom or pod mounts, but also because of the static rotors. The VT-30 partially alleviates the problem by using a twin boom tail and placing the rotors on the boom. Also note that if the rotors are longitudinally aligned along the aircraft direction of travel, then the cruise drag can be reduced. But this is still far from ideal. Fortunately, there have been at least three different solutions that have been proposed to counter the drag problem while still maintaining the Lift Plus Cruise configuration. The first solution is using retractable blade. A study was conducted using wind tunnel tests with propellers extended and retracted. The results showed that retracting of the propellers into the fuselage reduces the parasitic drag by 38%. This measured drag reduction was also used to estimate the performance of a passenger EV toll and a surveillance drone by employing a propeller retraction system. It was calculated that a passenger carrying EVTOL Lift Plus Cruise aircraft with a propeller retraction system could cruise 21% faster at the same mission range or increase the range by 13% at the same flight speed. When endurance is the main mission objective, the benefits are smaller, that is just around 7%, and the potential gains are more sensitive to the weight of the retraction system. The presence of retraction system also adds to the complexity. The second solution is called the rotor wing. In this system, the rotor, when not needed, folds into a wing. This is used by Joby's Lotus. The rotor wing, however, can be only used on the wing edges. The third solution is a rotor that is embedded inside a wing. We have seen several aircraft in fiction that use this. The Quinjet from Avengers is one example, but even in real life there are aircraft manufacturers that are working on this idea. The Atia by Ascendance Flight Technologies uses the wing embedded rotors. It has to be noted that if the inlet in a wing embedded lifting rotor is open, then the lip curvature on the wing on the edge of the rotor cavity plays an important role in the performance. A study showed that a step on the lower side of the wing in front of the lifting fan duct increases the lift to drag ratio by up to 25% for all positive angles of attack. Different sizes and inclination of the step had limited influence on the surface pressure distribution. The data indicates that these parameters can be optimized to maximize the lift to drag ratio. An even better solution is to have the wing split open during hovering mode to expose the lifting fan and closing the wings during cruise mode, thereby concealing the fan completely and making a smooth wing surface. This system is being explored by the Keverit X5 by Horizon Aircraft. One has to note that there are several designs that are looking at options with ducted fans as lifting rotors. The use of ducted fans, however, brings with it some strong challenges. While ducted fans are slightly more efficient during hover mode, but during cruise mode, they create more drag. Therefore, the use of ducted fans should consider these adverse effects when designing an aircraft. So if you were to be asked to develop a Lift Plus cruise aircraft, then how would your design look like? Please do share your design for the benefit of communal learning in the comment section. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.